Hello. I'm Pastor George Borkard, and this is another Higher Things video short. The gospel word on divorce. That's the subject of today's Higher Things video short. Hey, if you love these videos, if you've been daring to be Lutheran with, with Thor and I this Lenten season, if you've been uh, enjoying learning a little bit more about your faith and well, hanging with some Lutherans, you can go ahead and hit like today and uh, subscribe to our Facebook or YouTube channel. And also, you can go to support.hirethings.org and give today your tax deductible gift. Doesn't provide treats for Thor, but it does keep these videos rolling. So, a little bit about divorce. We need a little gospel word on divorce because divorce happens. Sin happens. People fail. Mom fails. Dad fails. Wife fails. Husband fails. People fail. Because they're sinners. Fail sinners. They miss the mark. They transgress. They do what they shouldn't do. Wives are unfaithful. Husbands are unfaithful. Husbands and wives are abusive. One spouse abandons another. The children are left in the middle picking up the pieces of the mess made by their parents. And it's not fair and it's not fun. Um, and nobody survives a divorce unscathed. I wouldn't wish on my greatest enemy a divorce. It's awful. Sin happens. Divorce happens. So what, what about it? Well, divorce happens because one person sins. In the church, um, we look at uh, reasons for divorce as sort of marital unfaithfulness. Not sort of, marital unfaithfulness. One person is unfaithful to another. That can have, that can look like unfaithfulness, like adultery, a bomb, but it can also look like abuse or abandonment. One spouse abuses the other, they're not keeping their vows. And not, um, one person abandons the other and re won't return. But for reasons for divorce, don't go with me on this one. Go talk to your pastor, because some pastors don't recognize abuse as a reason for divorce, and some pastors don't recognize abandonment as a reason for divorce. Everyone should sort of stick to the Lord's words and say, well, adultery, definitely. But these things don't require a divorce. Like, something happens, and therefore, there must be a divorce. No, the Lord can reconcile folks even through the worst things and the worst sins. He can cause us to repent and for, be forgiven. It can cause us to overlook the sins of our spouse, even the grossest of sins. And so having a reason for a divorce doesn't necessarily mean a divorce. It must happen. But when things become untenable, when they become sick and with sin and death, divorce occurs. God hates it. We hate it. No one is psyched about having a divorce. Oh, yes, I love being divorced. And in Christianity, um, the person who gets divorced feels judged by others, feels looked down by by the state. They, they want to take time off of church. They're ashamed of what happened. You should think about this when it pertains to your parents. Mom and dad aren't cool with the fact that they got divorced. And if they are, they're only trying to put on a good phase. They know they let you down, and they know they let God down. And as, as like a, like a like a person involved in the the divorce, they need confession and absolution. They need forgiveness, even if they have the most biblical grounds for divorce. The best confession I ever heard was from a guy whose wife was unfaithful to him. A long time after he was remarried, he came to confession and he said, "You know what?" I was responsible for her, unfa her unfaithfulness. But the way I acted and the way I lived, my, that adultery didn't occur in a vacuum. It occurred because I was a bad husband. And so even when it's not technically our fault, we still look at ourselves in our need of forgiveness. And when in all of that, and in the shame and the sick and the loss and the death that is divorce, the comfort is the forgiveness of sins achieved by Jesus on the cross. You see, Christ gives us a faithful husband who dies for his wife. And Christ gives us and makes and shows us a bride who's faithful. She has died for. 
She's washed clean in the blood and water that flow from his pierced side. So that those who are divorced or those who are affected by a divorce, the train wreck which is sin, the hope, is not that we agree to be mature and move past it, the life-altering events that occur to us, or not that we sort of learn to accept a reality which isn't what we've planned. The only hope is the forgiveness of sins, forgiveness for people who have failed in their marriages in such catastrophic ways that the only hope that they have is Christ, and forgiveness for those who have been sinned against in such a way as they can't fathom staying. In all of this, Christ wants to forgive. He wants repentance and faith. I've sinned. I don't deserve the mercy of God, but Jesus. Because in the end, we are not saved by whether or not we stay faithful in our marriages or not. Stay faithful in your marriages. We're saved by the suffering and death of Jesus. And if you're listening to this and you're getting all grumpy with me because you think that I've given people reasons to divorce, you think that I've, I've allowed them to sin, you are clueless to what is going on in this video. What's going on in this video is not permission to divorce. What's going on in this video is where divorce has occurred, there is comfort and forgiveness. Because the only hope that any of us have in this life is that Christ was faithful unto death, that he was a good husband to his bride, the church, and that we have been died for by his church, and that our baptism saves us because Jesus saves us, that the absolution spoken to us by our pastor forgives us because it does, because Christ gave us our pastor to speak that word of forgiveness to us and because of the very body and blood, which is the medicine of immortality for sinners who are hurting and dying because they've lost and failed in a place where they thought that they were okay. If you think that I've lost my mind and have given people permission to, um, to divorce, you've misheard me. God hates divorce. He's not a big fan of it. But where divorce has occurred, or where the only answer for our not being able to, to live with a person who's failed us, or we've failed so greatly that person can't live with us, or they've abandoned us, or it's unsafe to stay, there is forgiveness in Jesus, and there is mercy in Jesus. And also, kids, where your parents have failed, Forgive them. They didn't want to fail you. They probably tried to stay longer in order to have you have a good home. They didn't want you to be separated from both parents or spend in multiple weeks in either place. Have mercy. Forgive them. Because that's what they need. That's what you need. That's what we all need to be saved. We need Jesus' cross. For divorced people, and for people who are affected by divorce, the answer is Christ alone. I'm Pastor George Borkar, and this has been another Higher Things video short.